Welcome to this conversation uh, related to the Festival of Faith and Writing. My name is Otto Salas. I'm a professor of French here at Calvin University, and I'm also um, a faculty fellow for the Festival of Faith and Writing. That means I get to hang out with these two great fellows, um, my colleagues in the English department, Professor Lou Klatt and Professor Jane Swart, and we're going to call each other by our first names since we know each other. But <laughs> If you meet us, you should call us professor. But, uh, <laughs> that's okay. So um, we, we've been working, uh, preparing the fossil now for a number of years. And as you know, it's been uh, postponed and postponed, but we're very much looking forward to uh, the 2022 um, uh, meeting of the festival in March. And we have a great lineup of poets, which I'm sure that you've already looked up. What we're going to do today is talk about more the, the nuts and bolts of poetry writing and uh, actually the more the mechanics of poetry submission and uh, all the how to's that many, especially beginning poets and poets who, who reach a sort of plateau in, in their writing ask about. Um, Lou and Jane are very accomplished poets who have, uh, have a, as I said to them before, as we were starting this meeting, they have an arm's length or two arms lengths of, of poetry credits. It's very impressive. And in major publications, uh, Lou has uh, four, four books published um, and Jane has one on the way, right? Okay. We, hope. Well, <laughs> we have, no, no, we are certain. Um, so I'm gonna start with a, a general question and I'll, I'll start with, um, the first one is to ask both of you and I'll start with Lou. What, what is your process right now for getting poems ready for a submission? Well, I, there isn't any one process for me anymore. Uh, basically, I go after poems that I think are the most vital, that have the most energy, the ones I'm most excited about. Uh, that could be new poems or that could be poems that have sat around for a while, but I have revisited them and I'm re-enthused about them. Um, you know, the whole Frost line about no surprise for the writer, no surprise for the reader. Right. You know, if, if I feel like my poems um, still sort of jazz me in some way, um, then I feel like, yeah, someone out there might like them too. So for me, it's a ma matter of sort of locating uh, where the energy is in my poems. And, Sometimes really good poems, or at least poems I think are good poems, still are not giving me the energy I, I want out of a reading. So, so then I just sort of set those aside and just take the ones that I think that really I feel most confident about. Okay, so you have a confidence set. And what about you, Jane? I think um, one of the things I think about when I'm sending out work and choosing poems to send out is just what I know um, about the journal and about other people they've published. Um, so I kind of get a sense of what their aesthetic is or their sensibility is. And then I often go through my sort of um, available stuff and see if there are things that seem like they might be a good fit. Okay, so, so you have poems that, that fit a journal, you have poems that you feel good about, how many are you sending out? What are, what about the actual step-by-step -step process? I mean, do you go buy a stamp and an envelope? What, what are you doing these days? <laughs> well, not a lot of, not a lot of stamps and envelopes anymore. Although there's still, there are still some that ask you to mail in hard copies. Um, and I think for people who are just beginning, one of the really um, useful things to do is just to begin sort of puddling around online. Um, there are a lot of great resources. Some of them cost money, some of them don't, um, but you can use submittable.com um, to begin exploring and to a lot of journals and magazines use that as their submissions portal. Um, but you can also look at things like New Pages, which has um, a list of a lot of literary journals and magazines, um, and then Go 
from whatever place to those web pages at those magazines. And from those, you often get pretty specific instructions about how many poems to send right. um, and formatting and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I would, I would say to look around. I think um, I've heard that Duotrope is a great resource too, um, but that is one of those that you need to pay a membership fee for. So um, being, you know, working on a shoestring, I have not done that yet. Okay. What, what about you, Lou? You, ha you have your, 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 your group of poems. What, what do you do then? Are you, do you have journals in mind, a list of journals? What, what do you do? Yeah. Then? Well, I mean, I have a list of journals in mind, sure. And I, you know, I've been looking at new pages for a couple of decades now. They've been around for a long time. And uh, they really are a great resource. And I just echo what Jane is saying about them because they – give you the the magazines websites they even you know give you uh the parameters what those journals are expecting uh how many poems what their uh reading window is in terms of uh dates that you can send and what the cutoff is um etc so um yeah and i think too what jane's saying about the aesthetic is really important and to sort of have a sense of what this magazine is. But for me, I, you know, also, I think uh, it's really about, is this a place where I would be proud to have my home in? And if I feel like I would be proud to have my poem in that place, uh, whether it's a new journal or an old journal, um, that's, that's one of the deciding factors for me. I want it to look good. Uh, so typography is really important to me. And I'm also very interested in, uh, do they have artwork? What other kinds of things do they have in the journal besides poetry? Mm -hmm. So that's important. Um, I send out, you know, I think the typical submission is three to five poems. That's just mm -hmm. standard. Uh, there's some places that will take more. And you have to think about the people that are uh, reading those uh, slush piles and uh, whether they really are sincere when they say they'll take up to 10 poems uh, or 10 pages of poetry uh, or whether, you know, they say that, but they would rather just see three to five. Um, you know, the, there are two schools of thought with a big submission uh, there's a sense that, oh, I get more, uh, the editor gets more of a sense of what you're doing mm -hmm. in your poems and the range. Uh, there's another school of thought that says, right, uh, the more pages you have out there, the more chances you have to make uh, some kind of mistake that, uh, you know, creates a, uh, an annoyance or irritation in the reader. So um, it's, it, you know, I, I don't think there's one way to think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but I think the advice of uh, submitting to a journal where you can see your name printed in, because that, that's something that you have to live with, um, you know, for your for future credits as well. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, Jane, you know, let's say, is there a particular time of the year that you're sending poems out? Or you, is this something that you have a time of the week that you're doing it? Or, or is it a summer activity? Yeah. So I feel like um, just to add one other thing for yeah. journal selection, one of the things that I have found really useful is as I'm reading poetry, um, and especially as I'm reading contemporary poetry, all these small books have their acknowledgments page. And Lou, you probably do this too. But if there's someone you not only really enjoy their work, but you feel like there's some sort of kinship between what you're trying to get up to and what they're doing. If you look at their acknowledgments, that's often a good way to say to yourself, oh, so maybe I could fit there. Um, and I've, you know, made lists from the back of a number of poets books to think about places that I should at least look into um, as potential fits. And as far as submitting work goes, a lot of these places work on their own very specific calendars, as Lou was saying, and they have submission windows. 
a number of them for months at a time, but some of them just, you know, a couple weeks here and there. Um, So that's actually something I've taken to keeping track of in my planner. Um, Just when they're open, that doesn't mean I'll necessarily send. But if I have something, uh, when I see that come up on the side of the week and I'm like, oh, I, I actually do have a set that might be a good fit for them, then I'll just send those out. And so... I think there's a side of it that's really, for me, just methodical. And um, I don't want to call it a chore because I don't, uh, you know, resent doing it in any way. I actually kind of enjoy doing it, but it's really different from the creative process part. It's much more sort of task and entrepreneurial and the business end of things. Um, So yeah, I I submit year round and I just kind of follow my planner. And if it suggests something that I feel like is a good idea um, for a place to submit at that time. I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about the entrepreneurial side of it. You know, that that's it is the the business side of, of the creative work, mm-hmm. just like having your own website or um, being up to date that way. Um, the, the, there isn't a way around it unless you want the poems published long after you are have departed um, <laughs> I don't, it works the other way too i mean you're exactly yeah. right it's, it's it's the entrepreneurial side but it yeah. works the other way too it, i think that when you know you're sending to a journal that you have respect for the editors and and what they're doing it really ups your game and it makes you look at your work in a different way uh, almost through a third eye and i think you scrutinize your work a little bit more uh, and for me, you know, a good rule of thumb is to test every word, uh, to think about, have I really thought through every word in this poem, every, every piece of this poem? And it's surprising sometimes what you overlook when you're kind of doing it on your own, uh, because you're not thinking about the audience at that time. You're mostly, you know, working to please yourself. And maybe the one really great element of the poem is blinding you to some of the weaknesses of the poem. But when you decide, oh, now I'm going to send it to the Virginia Quarterly Review. Oh, I, you know, now you're starting to look at it with maybe a little bit more of a critical eye. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I think it makes my poems better. Yeah, well, that's great advice. What about the, um, you know, the, there are a lot of poetry contests. Um, do, do you submit to them? And, you know, I've seen them and always wonder, uh, look at them a little bit suspiciously as, as, as um, sort of the, the slush fund of poetry journals. Um, so I, what, what is your advice uh, in terms of uh, poetry contests, just the submitting poems, not book contests? Yeah, I'm, you know, it is a way that journals make money. I mean, let's just be frank about it. Um, And uh, I have had very little success with uh, individual poems in contests. Uh, Maybe that's because I don't have any poems that stand out. (laughs) I'm not sure. But, uh, but, you know, it's a fickle process. And um, a lot of this, and I think, Jane, you probably agree, a lot of this is about timing. Um, the right poem at the right time with the right people. Um, so, but, um, but as far as books are concerned, I've been very fortunate. Um, although it seems in the distant past now, um, uh, I mean, these contests, um, they're looking at 500 to 1500 manuscripts, maybe 2000. Um, that's a lottery. Uh, the good uh, work usually is acknowledged uh, when you're close, when you're a semifinalist, when you're a finalist, then that's a great sign. You're knocking on the door. Um, but it's a, it, it's a, it's very daunting um, and you have to pay money for it. And, but you have to look at it as investing in your craft, in your art. Mm-hmm. And um I just, I see it as important to do so. Yeah, Yeah, I don't really submit to contests that are for a single poem, partly because as Lou saying, all of these contests cost money and I would rather at this point spend mine with manuscript contests. 
Um, but I do think, and Lou and I have talked about this before, um, there is, yeah, an element not only of investing in your own art, but also I feel like with a manuscript contest, I'm also, until maybe someday it's my turn, I'm investing in other people's art too, mm. right? And so one of the things that I am doing is sort of paying my taxes as a literary citizen. And it might not be my book. In fact, it probably will not be my book, um, but it'll be a worthwhile book. I mean, I do trust that, you know, that money is contributing to something worthwhile. Um, but as far as those contests go, yeah, as Lou says, there's so much of chance involved with that, right? And I think there's, I mean, there has to be a certain sort of value to the work itself, but you also, I mean, a lot of it is stubbornness and luck as well. Now, now um, both of you have had um, recent credits in, in uh, major journals, uh, Jane in poetry and Lou in the New Yorker just this year. Um, can you talk about that a little bit, how that went? Um, that's, uh, and congratulations to both of you on that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so I I was greatly surprised um, to have a poem accepted in poetry. I was surprised by how fast the reply was. It was a couple of years ago now over Christmas break that I had gotten to sending around some things and I heard back within 24 hours, which is really, really fast. Um, and yeah, not poetry's usual response time. Um, so yeah, I still, I mean, it's part fluke, right? It's, there was that element of chance and that element of luck. And I'm not saying that in any sort of disparagement of the poem, um, but I've been sending to them for years and years. And I suspect Lou does this too. When you send out work, you send to places that you think on a good day are probably in reach and you send to places that you don't really trust are in reach. Um, but there's, there's no real harm in trying. So yeah, it is in that spirit that I sent to them, um, and was really shocked and delighted to see that it was a fit. Great. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, you know, I, I agree. I mean, it's, a. Uh it's a wild ride um, and it's a dream, right? To be in these places. Um, the New Yorker, you know, I've been, you know, like a lot of people, right? I, I've been looking at that magazine, reading, I've been a subscriber to that magazine for decades. And I probably have sent uh, poems to them, you know, once or twice a year for probably 18 years, something like that. So, uh, and the, the submission that, did finally take, um, it sat at their office for a year. Wow. So, um, you know, you just never know. You know, sometimes, you know, when something sits that long, you think, oh, it, it, maybe they're really seriously looking at it. And then sometimes that's not the case at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you know, it's this incredible disappointment. Uh, but, you know, this is what you sign up for. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think for me also, it, what an exciting, you know, thing to work with the editors there mm -hmm. and, uh, just the first class, you know, um, editorial staff that they have and the professionalism for me, that's what was really exciting. And also a, 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 a venue where you can showcase your work widely mm -hmm. and that people actually have heard of the magazine. Uh, which, you know, isn't always the case. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was, that was a lot of fun. And to, you know, a culmination really of uh, a lot of years work. So, but there's still a lottery uh, aspect to it. They, they read through every single poem um, that they get uh, sent. And that's thousands and thousands of poems. Uh, I think it's, I, I, I could be wrong, but I think it's over a hundred thousand a year. Uh, so um, they are uh, diligent and uh, and saints, I think, to to endure that. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the question that you know I've heard different things, even 
uh, previous festivals when these questions came up about observing simultaneous submissions or not, and, and some poets saying, no, don't worry about it, just send everything out. What, what is your policy and what do you do yourself or what do you tell students? I, I obey the rules, but You're, that's just a sort of general statement about my <laughs> approach to life probably. Yeah. Um, I, I will say if a place does not take simultaneous submissions and they have a reputation for being really quick, I think of some place like Three Penny Review, um, they won't take simultaneous submissions, but they will get back to you probably within two days. Um, then I think it's worth sort of taking those poems totally off the market for that amount of time. Um, but if places are slower and don't take simultaneous submissions, then I just, I don't send to them um, because I am not so prolific that I can, you know, just take things and say, I'm going to wait six months to have anybody else kind of read this. So that's my approach. Yeah, I, I feel like I try to set aside my best poems for the best places. Um, and so I, I tend to, of course, you don't always know what your best poems are, but what you think are your best poems. And so I, I'm willing to sort of wait a long time for those. And then once I've had, it, you know, you know, they've had their shot, then, you know, then it's, you know, I distribute them more widely. Um, I definitely respect the, the simultaneous, uh, you know, not simultaneous submissions um, line because I think, uh, you know, it's, it's the prerogative of that magazine to, to establish what they want. And, you know, it's our choice whether or not we submit. So, you know, to kind of play fast and loose with the rules doesn't seem like it has, you know, a ton of integrity. I'm sure people have their reasons for doing that, but for me, I just, I don't see how that, that uh, makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it, it, sometimes I just say, well, I, I won't send there because, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like waiting around. Mm -hmm. um, but other places, you know, I have no problem doing that for. Okay, well, there you heard it, folks. Obey the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I think, I think that's a good attitude because uh, if you were to send something out and it were accepted by a major journal and you had to retract it, that would be the worst. I, I, uh, yeah. I would yeah. not recommend that. Um, I, this is a question for Jane. Um, you know, when, when I looked at your CV, you know, you had early publications and, and then in the last couple of years, you've been, you've been publishing a lot is, is if I can ask what, has something changed or you have you been able to give more time to it or or how i mean it's very impressive well thanks um and yeah i think a couple things have changed uh the primary one is that for a period of years there i had small kids uh -huh. um and I was still writing, um, although not as much as I am now. And um, just in terms of sending things out, I just couldn't be as sort of disciplined and systematic about that. Um, so that's, I mean, that's just sort of a season of life, I kind of answer. Um, the other thing that has changed though, in terms of more the creative process and just in terms of having more work to send out is um, thanks to a sort of partnership with another poet whom I admire to no end, um, Amit Majmudar. Mm -hmm. I have finally learned how to write a poem to fill in an empty shape instead of how to write a poem just because a seed starts going on its own, right? So I think for a long time, like I have this lovely notebook called Poem Crumbs and little bits and pieces of observation or potential I collect there. And I think for a long time, I just kind of waited for them to come together or germinate or what have you. Um, and then I had this uh, sort of strange moment where 
I was on Twitter and I saw this angel at the Holy Sepulchre painting by this Russian artist. And I saw it and it looked so exhausted, right? And you never see that. Like angels always just look dewy, mm-hmm. fresh as anything. And I loved it. So I tweeted the picture out again. And I was like, I've just decided that I like my angels sleep deprived. And this poet, Amit Majmudar, whom I'd met through the festival and actually was lucky enough to interview at festival 2018, um, tweeted back and he said, writing prompt, a poem called The Sleep Deprived Seraph. And I laughed and moved on. And about 20 minutes later, there was a poem in my Gmail from Amit called The Sleep Deprived Seraph. And he ended the email by saying, your turn. Wow. And I was terrified and, you know, a little bit in awe and so on. But I was like, you know what? Let's see if we can make one. Mm. So I did. And it wasn't amazing, but it was it was not bad. So I sent it to him and he was like, we should do this back and forth with a title. We'll take turns choosing Mm. the title and then we'll both write a poem for it and we'll do it for a month and we'll send each other the poems. And I have never been, um, yeah, quite so excited and quite so scared about a creative sort of endeavor at the same time. But I was like, oh, all right. And so we did. And obviously some of the poems are much better than others. Um, and it is, yeah, sort of an uneven group, but yeah, um, it's called it mirror writing. And so every once in a while we do this, we take turns giving each other titles and writing to the titles and there's weird resonances. There's things that are wildly disparate. Um, I know that I have written some real clunkers along the way, um, but I've also written some poems that I never would have written otherwise that are really worthwhile, I think. Um, worthwhile, at least for me to have written. Uh, So yeah, to realize that I could say, okay, I am going to write a poem about this, or I'm just going to sit down and write a poem now. And maybe it'll be a bad poem and maybe it'll be a good poem. We have recycling for a reason, right? So yeah, that, that is a real change in my own sort of creative process in the last couple of years. I I think that's really great advice. And, and, and to people listening there that um, you can you can come to times in your life because of family or work that you cannot write, but that doesn't mean that it's over, right? That, that maybe that's the time that you need to come back to it, or maybe you need to seek out uh, a writing partner, um, something like that. So um, that, that's really great. And I see a publication there. You know, you can have uh, mirror mirror uh, the prompt and the poems. Okay, yeah. publishers, are you listening? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, Lou, do you work with, with um, do you do you work with a reader? Um, um, you know, I you know I've often read of different poets who you know sent poems to each other. Uh, you know, often you know yeah. the greats um, corresponded with each other. Uh, yeah, I I don't. I haven't really had the good fortune, and and probably haven't sought out uh, the way I I think I should. Uh, I certainly know of such partnerships and I certainly admire what Jane has been able to uh, cultivate with uh, Amit. Um, so, uh, but no, I, I haven't. Okay. So it doesn't, but you know, it's also, it's how people work and, um, and, and what, what moves you ahead. Um, so we've talked about, um, oh yeah, let, let's talk that. Uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, the do's and the do nots. You know, uh, what you should do is know the journal, know your audience, um, and, you know, um, know your work well, its weakness and its strengths. Are there, is there other advice you would want to give? Uh, also thinking of what you tell students in your classes. Well, I, I, uh, I always uh, give my students uh, advice about why you should publish. And then I turn around and tell them why they should not publish. Um, Because I think, you know, and again, it's very individual and it depends on what stage you are in your life or or in what stage you are in your 
cultivating of your own poems and your own voice. Um, there, there's, I, I just would affirm that you do need time when you're maybe not being so public. You need time to kind of go underground. You need time to uh, not be trying to pander or please, which I think is the temptation uh, when you see all these great magazines and book publishers out there. You know, you are you get maybe a little bit starry-eyed and you lose track of what it is that you specifically are, you know, supposed to be writing. And I think um, the other thing... Uh, I, I consider is your audience may, and I tell students, your audience may not be in this generation. Um, one of my good friends in poetry, uh, Jeffrey Nutter, he, uh, he, he, we had this conversation in my office a long time ago. And he said, uh, you know, when I write my poems, I, I feel like I'm having conversations with Herman Melville and uh, some of these, you know, people from the past. And, and it's a wonderful idea because, uh, you know, these are, these are some literary giants and who have such great minds and their capacity to think about uh, what poetry can be uh, is so great. Uh, sometimes I think we're, we're creatures of the moment, prisoners of the moment. And uh, we don't give ourselves the kind of room right, to, to go the places we could go if we were sort of uh, unshackled uh, from, the, uh, from the present. So uh, not that there shouldn't be ephemeral poems, um, not that there shouldn't be poems that meet uh, our specific generation at this specific time, because I think there absolutely must be. Uh, but I do think that uh, there are poems that, you know, uh, you know, want to do something else. And, you know, the, the, the mark of creativity is that it's always making new. And, you know, there is a way in which um, we all are um, mockingbirds and we are all, all mimicking each other. Uh, and so sometimes maybe we need to sort of have a time in a season where we're, where we're not doing that. We're really going our own way. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Not not being caught up in, you know, for the the bright shiny things, um, which maybe aren't that shiny in the end. Uh, yeah, Jane, Jane, any other thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things, um, and I have mixed success at this, and I think Lou probably does too. But one of the things I tell students is that. To a certain extent, if you're going to enter into the whole endeavor of sending out work and trying to find your readers, um, you're going to have to build some calluses, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think I have over time, but there are still moments where I'm like, oh, no, there's, there's still a little tender spot there, it turns out. Um, but also... I would really urge people who are sending out work um, for the first time, yeah, as Lou says, to make sure that it's work that you feel proud of, um, to make sure that you even feel maybe not proud of, but satisfied that you're representing yourself in the best way you can in your cover letter. Um, and that sort of attention to all of those little details and, you know, make sure you spell your own name right and the journal's name right and all of that. Um, I think those small things make a big difference. Um, but I would also say, yeah, even as you're doing all of that, I think a certain, and it's, it's my worst fruit of the spirit, really, but a certain amount uh -huh. of patience is just really necessary um, to the endeavor. And I do urge students too to join literary community in other ways, right? By being readers and by going to hear other people read their work and maybe by reviewing. Um, and if you're sending out work that you're proud of, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll always be proud of it, right? Yeah. I look back at some things that I have written mm. that I was quite smitten with at the time. And I, yeah, I don't feel 
proud of them anymore. I don't feel ashamed of them. Um, But I saw somewhere Shane McRae had seen a poem come up that he wrote much earlier in his career. And uh, he came across it and he was like, you know, at first I was like, oh, you again. But then I thought to myself, you know, that's the way I wrote poems before I knew how I wanted to write poems. And I really appreciated that, right? There is this sort of process in terms of your voice changing over time. Um, Hopefully your skills increasing over time. So I wouldn't tell students like, hold off until you feel like you have this perfect voice, right? Or this perfect piece, Mm -hmm. but do hold off until you feel proud of what you've written. Yeah. uh, Also good advice of of being, uh, like you say, having a fairly thick skin, um, and but also realizing that you do change, uh, that you mature, uh, get better, hopefully. Um, so yeah, um, how, how about the sense of you know the slush pile of you've been at it for years and you're always stuck in the slush pile? What what would you say? You know, it's just, it's just not going anywhere. What would you say to someone then? I I would say I think you should. Um, work for a journal for a while and, 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 and read the slush pile. And uh, one of the most transformative experiences I had as a graduate student was to work as an assistant to the editors at the Georgia review. Mm -hmm. So that I had to read thousands of, of submissions. It really helped me to see my own work in light of what was being sent and things I thought were really original were turned out, you know, every poet was saying what I was saying. And I, I, I was stunned. Um, so I don't know. I feel like uh, reading and, and being put in that position of editing, it really does change your own eye, your eye toward your own work. So I would really uh, encourage that. And, and the second thing would be uh, to follow up on what Jane said, which is to be part of a literary community. Um, which I think, you know, is just very stimulating. I mean, I haven't had the partnerships that she's had, but when I, when I was starting out uh, living in Pittsburgh and I was a campus minister at the time, uh, there was a thing called the Pittsburgh Poetry Exchange. And it was writers from all over the city at various levels, people who are publishing in great journals and publishing books and people like myself who were, you know, just starting out. And uh, there was a workshop every month and it was rotating whose poem would go up. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that was a really powerful experience uh, and stimulating. And we spun off a reading group and um, just, I think sometimes you have to cultivate the love Mm -hmm. and um, with people who love poetry. And I think that's, I think it can help get you out of your own ruts. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the last thing I would say is form. And I think Jane was kind of alluding to that earlier, but uh, almost every one of my books has reckoned with form in some way. And one of the great um, surprises for me was writing the prose poem uh, and starting to write that. And uh, it really opened up a whole bunch of things that I never knew that I could write. Um, And I'm currently working on something uh, responding to, well, harvesting language from Flannery O'Connor's stories and essays uh, exclusively. And that that formal project really sort of has taken me out of my own ruts Mm -hmm. and got me moving in a direction that I never would have gone had I not, you know, sort of had a formal challenge like that. So I think there's something about about the formal aspects of poetry that enable you to recast what's swimming around and tap into other kinds of things that you didn't even know were there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. excellent. So, so looking for communities, for, uh, for shaking up your, your process, for your creative work. Maybe you just need to restart things, you know, uh, and take up a challenge like Jane, what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that could take different forms. You know, a lot of people react to, to paintings or photographs or, or a natural element. 
Um, any, any other, we should probably close this up now. Any, any other things? This yeah. is a lot of fun. Um, I'll just, I'll add one thing. Yeah. And if, you know, if this doesn't make it into the final uh, version, that's totally fine. But I would encourage people too, who are sending out work and getting responses for the first time. There are of course, a lot of form rejections, but every once in a while you get that nice no, right? And it's still a no. So I guess it's not nice <laughs> that way, but if an editor writes back and says, we can't find a place for these, but we really liked what you were up to, try us again, they mean it. So do try them again. Um, when I keep track of my submissions, I color code, of course, um, but I have a separate color for that, right? So it's not quite a no, it's a nice no and worth going back to and an encouragement in its way, right? For anyone to read something that you like and take the trouble to add an extra sentence, that's not nothing, especially when, as Lou says, they are going through just untold reams of work and, you know, have no real obligation to give you that sort of, that encouragement. Yeah, the nice no's are great. And, um, I would just say, too, as, as a Christian, as someone who uh, thinks of his work as, you know, something that God has put me on this earth to do, um, it's not just culture, you know, um, being a professor or being a teacher, but also to be a writer. I, I truly do pray and ask God to lead me to my audience. Um, I don't know what that audience is, who they are, where they are, even what generation they are. Um, but I think God can materialize that audience for us. And um, I think, I do believe that, that, that writing and creativity is an act of faith. Um, and so I do uh, offer it that way uh, in my best moments. Uh, when I'm not crassly going after my own personal glory. No, no, thanks. Uh, living sacrifices in the written word. Um, yeah, I'd like to wrap this up. Uh, if, uh, and I'd also like to encourage uh, those who are listening to this, if you haven't already, sign up. Sign up for Festival 2022. Uh, again, um, uh, we have great people coming in in all genres, especially in poetry. And um, you also have the chance to rub elbows with uh, Lou Klatt and James Wart, who are right here. Uh, and uh, thank you for, for tuning in and uh, hope to meet you soon. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam.